really worry about nothing. All these people all around me always worry about something, yeah. Saying I should stay up in the books and I start to build a buzz, but they the ones bugging, yeah. That's why I don't really feel like staying. I don't really feel like. <laughs> okay, I just finished teaching my last class of 2021. Oh boy. She was doozy. Literally like had to leave the room to get a paper towel during the cool down because sweat was just dripping my eyes. I was gonna just sit down right after this class and start talking about power training, but I feel like I have to like redo my face. I feel like I was just sobbing. So <laughs> give me a minute, we'll come back, we'll chat. <laughs> Let's talk about power training. So I have mentioned training for power in a few previous videos and just gotten some questions about it. So I thought I would break down and like give you the case for power training. Specifically, we're gonna break down what it is, why it's important and how you can train for it. So let's just start with what it is. Very simply, power training is moving resistance as quickly as possible. And that's how it differs from strength training. Strength refers to the ability to move resistance or weight. With power, it's all about speed. That's why when you're training for power, you're typically training at a lighter weight or like a smaller percentage of your one rep max. So if we actually go to my website, we can read all about what power training is because I have a power program on there. So this is the power program that we actually literally just finished up today in my unlimited membership. So if you scroll down, you're gonna see all the different weeks of the program, but what I wanna look at is gimme to science. So power training refers to increased speed and intensity in strength-based exercises. While we still focus on basic strength patterns, they'll be coupled with explosive movement. Some health benefits of power training include stronger bones, increased muscle mass, and better cardiovascular health. Functionally, power training can help with reflexes and increase daily endurance through aerobic activities. As we age, we lose our power at almost double the rate that we lose our, our strength, so it's a vital phase to include in our training. So that's how I define power training and just some of the reasons why I think it's so important for everybody to train for. So that being said, it's 8.45. It's New Year's Eve, by the way. So happy new, well, happy new year to you now seeing this. So I have a pretty light day as far as clients. I just have one more client, but I also have to do a workout. I have to do some studying for my PN1 certification. Shout out to Precision Nutrition, not a sponsor, but I'm doing a video with them once I finish my cert, so I have to get on that. But if you're interested in um, that certification, I'll leave a link down below. I have a ton of editing to do, so that's the first chunk of what we're gonna do right now. Also, I have been making content for an app that is going live in January, which is very exciting. So anyway, I'll link it down below, but here's the here's the logo. But anyway, um, all of my videos are due today, and uh, I still have one more to edit, and it's gonna take me a buttload of time, so we have to do that. Okay, let's get to work. I will see you soon. So I already kind of dove into this when we went on my website and like saw my power program description, but I want to dive a little bit deeper. Let's just get like three benefits, three selling points. Number one is improved cardiovascular endurance. Even though power and endurance training are different, there is an overlap in some programming styles. Although with endurance, you are pushing yourself typically for a longer period of time or reps, you're still getting that heart rate up in power training to help work your cardiovascular system in addition to your skeletal system. Training like this can consistently can help your body bounce back faster and become more efficient with its energy. So functionally, let's think about this like carrying two bags of groceries up a few flights of stairs. With power training, we're gonna recover a lot faster from that climb rather than if we or doing power training. Second benefit is better reaction time. This is something I find really important because it can help prevent injury. Functionally, we can apply this in a lot of different ways. Let's say I'm walking down the street and I'm about to climb with a cab, I'm more likely to react and get out of the way faster without injury. I would really like that payout though from getting hit by a car. 
Even just thinking about age, as we age, we get more and more prone to falls. So implementing power training can drastically decrease that risk since our reaction time will just be better. And then the third benefit is your overall balance and coordination. If we think about power exercises, they're typically pretty dynamic, meaning they're constantly moving through space. So by having better spatial and body awareness in your training, you're more likely to be able to cross that over into your daily life. Are we sold yet? <laughs> All right, so it is noon right now. I'm actually making pretty good progress on my day. Like I thought I wouldn't be able to go to the post office until way later. So what we're gonna do, Kevin and I are gonna go on a little walk. I have to mail out the winnings from the 12 days of fitness challenge to our winner, Heather. And then when we get back, I'm just gonna like zone in, get my editing done. I just have that one video left for that app that I'm working with. And bye bye 2021. I might have something else to do. All right, let's go for a little walk. All right, we're on our walk. The plans got postponed because I forgot that I had groceries coming. So now we're going to the post office and then we realized that we have $75 in gift cards to Applebee's. So we're gonna go get a little New Year's Eve drink at 2.30 in the afternoon because <laughs> we're done work. But anyway guys, I wanna finish out the vlog by talking about how to train for power. So I kind of think of this in three different chunks, plyometrics, slams, and dynamic movements. So plyometrics are your jumps, hops, skips, and sprints. It's high intensity and high impact. Always keep in mind if you haven't mastered the low impact version first, do not advance to high impact. Always make sure that you're mastering the basics and then advance from there. Slams are typically done with med balls and they are a ton of fun. Oh, thank you. Kevin just saved my life. I almost stepped in poopy. <laughs> These are in a different category than plyometrics because you're gonna have more of a loading phase. For example, if you're doing an overhead slam, you get that long rubber band pullback and then accelerate to release. And then finally, we have dynamic strength. So for me, this is gonna be more about explosively moving weight. So kettlebell work, Olympic lifts, thrusters, there's a lot of examples to list here. Remember with all of these things though, it's not about performing the exercise as long as possible. We're talking one to 10 reps and then rest. And this goes back to your why. This is all about moving resistance as fast as possible. After 10 reps, you're really not going to be able to do that. You're then just working for endurance. Hello, brother. Oh! oh <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, I think that's a good place to end. What do you think? <laughs> All right, guys, um, if you have any other questions about power training, leave them in the comments below. And happy freaking new year. I will see you all. Well, you're seeing me now in 2022, but happy new year. Goodbye. <laughs>